and that's a turret control system that I cannot access because I'm not super smart. I'm not smart anymore. I'm just a big old brickhead ready to take some more bullets to the body. Yes, I am. I'm going to pick up that Blamco just because, just because. Hey, if this, oh, they were designed like a house. Oh, look at that. All these pencils are, are in the, in a house formation. Funny. Um, I can't remember if there was anything actually useful back here except for some snack foods. Well, all the chems wore off, so yay. <laughs> USS Eben Atoll's flag. This flag right here. What does it say? This flag was recovered from the wreck of the USS Eben Atoll, a U.S. Navy missile cruiser sunk off the coast of Alaska in 2066. With all hands lost, the cutting edge vessel's loss was due to a nuclear torpedo strike from the U.S. Navy submarine, the USS Interference, during the Anchorage campaign. The submarine mistook the cruiser for an enemy vessel during radio silence and sunk it before obtaining visual confirmation. Wow. So, uh, friendly fire in the worst possible way. Overlooked inventors. These portraits, created by the renowned contemporary artist Lincoln Myers, depict some of the more overlooked American inventors. From top to bottom, left to right, Richard G. Drew, adhesive tape in 1925, James Riddy, cash register in 1879, Carl C. McGee, parking meter, 1935, and Mary Anderson, windshield wiper, 1903. Very nice. I don't know if that's actually historically accurate. That could be, because the timeline split didn't happen until like the mid, well, like the mid 19 hundreds or something like that here we go couple of stealth boys oh yeah this is the robco stealth boy model 3001 personal stealth device developed by robert mayflower the stealth boy generates a modulating field that transmits the reflected light from one side of an object to the other making the bear almost invisible to the untrained eye very cool and the halls of today which is wreckage great great little joke <laughs> Are you all cool with me, like, going through and talking about, like, each of the exhibits and stuff like that? Because I may still, like, if the exhibit is is interesting. Um, but yeah, let me, let me know, I guess, but I might, I may still do it. <laughs> Museum info. It's not that one. Is it this one? Nope, not that one either. Okay, I need to find more of those terminals. But I guess we're going to go further into... The Vault Tour. Vault Tech welcomes you to our new line of subterranean vaults featuring our patented Triple S technology. Where's my walk button? There it is. Get the proper tour. Triple S technology is Vault Tech's convergence of the three most important parts of apocalyptic endurance safety, survivability, and sanitation. Ooh. Feel the atmosphere. Feel it. Sleep in quiet comfort, knowing that our impenetrable vault doors can withstand a direct hit by an atomic bomb with only a projected 2% failure rate. Being underground got you down? Smile! Our Simu Sun lighting mimics the feeling of being outside with only a fraction of the sunburn potential. The living sections make use of our revolutionary floor suck auto cleaner system for those darned messy kids. Never sweep again. Moms will love how our Culinator 3000 kitchen system makes cooking a breeze. Mmm, I can smell the muffins baking now. Bored? Don't be. Step into our Entertainatron room and watch the latest holotapes or perhaps listen to a symphony. Another Vault Tech innovation. Oh, so lovely. I love the tour. I love that we get the opportunity to do this, even though... Concerns about security? Our Eye on You cameras enable the vault's leader to watch your every move. You'll never be alone again! Oh! <laughs> constant... Constant watch, huh? That sounds great. Should the unlikely event arise that the planet is laid to waste, you'll feel happy knowing your family will be safe in a Vault Tech Vault. We hope you've enjoyed our tour today. If you have any further questions, please take a brochure from our helpful Vault Tech guides. Spoilers, uh, they're not safe. <laughs> okay. Now we're into the what wing? I gotta, I gotta get better at actually reading where I'm going. <laughs> so right now we're in the uh, west wing of the Museum of Technology. 
Uh, we can see over there, it, the lunar lander is is where we need to get the 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 satellite dish from. But obviously, we can't just jump through this wreckage. We have to go the long and tedious way around. But we'll also get to see some exhibits on the way, like this vertebrate here. This is a scaled model of a prototype military transport vehicle being developed by the U.S. military. The XVB-02 Vertibird is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing craft, with an extremely durable armored fuselage and can be armed with a variety of offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures. This is the most advanced aircraft of its kind ever developed, and the military hopes to press them into service by 2085. Ooh. We didn't make it to that point, but someone picked up the reins <clears throat> on Clave and decided to uh, make them anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, far out space facts terminals. We don't really need those. I don't think those terminals are... Well, I'm going to check them really quick for the clue thing. Nope, these are not the right terminals. We, we need to talk to the... Or look at the info terminals to get the... Uh, yeah, there's some over here too. Easy to miss. They kind of blend in with the scenery here. Okay, info terminal. Nope, that's not that's not the right thing. What about this one? Yes. Ah ha ha. What zero zero two? Did I miss the first one? I probably missed the first one, didn't I? Gosh dang it. I must save ahead of time. Just to make sure. Zero zero two. Okay, we're looking for the prime number. I believe it's 53. Confirmed. Okay. Good. First try. <laughs> uh, should we go back now and try to find the other terminal? No, we'll just we'll just go through, I guess. I guess we'll just go through. Uh, what's this over here? Exhibit under construction. I hear muties. I hear several muties. The exhibit is undergoing a renovation and should be... Those are words. <laughs> I'm going to fight some mutants. Another brute. I'm going to use some more chems because they wore off. I'm ready to walk through you again. Why would I bring all these chems if I wasn't going to use them? I'll use these blood packs too. And eat some snacks. Just shoving food in my face and drinking blood right in front of the super mutant. All's normal here. <laughs> Drop your gun. Or be staggered. One of those things. Time to lose. I just kicked him in the gut. Or kicked him in the arm. There we go. Knocked his head right off of his shoulders. Enough of that, mutie. There's another one. Up there looking for me. A space suit? This is the actual USSA deep space suit worn by Captain Carl Bell on May 5th, 1961. Captain Bell is credited as being the first human in space on board the Space Capsule Defiance 7 but this has been constantly refuted by both the Soviet Union and China. Defiant 7's flight lasted for a total of 12 minutes and 7 seconds as it achieved one full revolution around the Earth. Space racy kind of stuff. Uh-oh. It's another brute. Strange. That's enough of you, big monstrosity. No. No. Fist fight. Fist fight. We're doing fist fight. Don't get your gun back out. Why can't we make it fair? <laughs> Drop your gun again. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And another assault rifle to pick up. Who is... Okay, they're up there. All right. This is Captain Carl Bell. Oh! Wait, why was there a corpse in here? Hold on. This is the actual skeleton of Captain Carl Bell, who died on May 5th, 1961, after his space capsule crash-landed. Captain Bell is credited as, as being the first human in space on board the space capsule Defiant 7, but has been constantly refuted by both the Soviet Union and China. Defiant 7's flight, blah 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 blah, donated by Edwina Bell. 
So his wife? That's interesting. Valiant 12 flag. This is weird. That's funny. So, let me get this straight. 1961. Yeah. So, went up into space, went around the earth, and then crash landed and died. Is that accurate? I don't know if that's historically accurate. That would be a sad comedy if that was... If that was the case. I don't know. Now I want to look this up. I certainly hope his skeleton's not in the Museum of Technology. Because <laughs> that would be funny. Kind of. That would be... Yeah, that would still be funny, I think. I... I would love to be a historical figure, enough of a historical figure, for someone to put my remains in a museum. That would be great. <laughs> uh, Fallout and Skyrim guide YouTuber isn't enough, I don't think, though. I don't think that's enough. Okay, we'll find a museum information terminal. Aha, here's 003. So we'll save and open this up. 003. Um, another prime number here would be... I feel like it would be 111. I could be wrong there. Error. It's not 111. Reload. That never happened. <laughs> so it's 113 then? Or 105? 113. It was the was the correct answer. Okay. Well, good thing we saved, huh? Because <laughs> I don't I don't want to mess I don't want to miss this unique that we're gonna come up on. Oh yeah, we should probably look into the uh, the Delta Nine rocket, shouldn't we? Delta 9 rocket information. Delta 9 rocket commissioned by the USSA in 2020 was the last of the manned rockets that sent our brave American astronauts to the moon. The Delta 9 was in use for almost 15 years before being converted for military use and having the crew and instrument sections replaced with a nuclear warhead. The Delta 9 recorded over 77 successful launches, making it one of the most successful rockets in U.S. history. The rocket, developed entirely by USSA scientists, was a single stage vehicle with an injectable crew section or a satellite storage bay. The propulsion system was a nuclear electric derivative drive using a massive electrical jolt to start the nuclear reaction on launch. The crew section was protected from the radioactive chambers by way of massive titanium vanadium disc. The spacecraft had the capability to sustain two astronauts for up to 24 days maximum. The longest recorded space flight on the Delta IX rocket was the 17-day Zeus-12 mission to the moon. Okay. That's a lot of information. I hope you enjoyed that. It was a heck of a time to read. <laughs> There's some words I just have a hard time saying. I'm sure you can all relate, though. Sometimes words just don't work. Words fail. Okay. So we have some fancy lad snacks up here. Some pork and beans. Let's snack it up a little bit. We're actually running out of stim packs. It's taking a lot of stim packs to stay healthy. <laughs> okay. Might have to uh, speed through the main story a little bit more so we can get some some uh, some enclave to show up. There's I can't get in this door. Oh no. There must be a maintenance key somewhere that I can access. I vaguely remember something like that being the situation. So instead, we need to go downstairs, I think. Because there's a passage down here, right? Let me let me double check that uh, that Carl Bell thing really quick. Okay, after a quick search online, it seems like this Carl Bell is fictional. <laughs> In case there was any question. Um, because, yes, it's funny. His remains are, are uh, in the display case. Oh, hey! Interesting. This is what I need right here. I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna grab it. You can't stop me. The communications disc on the Virgo 2 Lunar Lander appears easy to remove. Take it. It's mine. Hello, Super Mutant Master. Please drop that gun. Otherwise, this is gonna hurt a lot. Please drop your gun. 
Thank you. Nope, we're fist fighting. Stop it. Stop it. My power fist is almost broken. And my chems have run out, too. That big old flash should have been a dead giveaway. But no. Kato doesn't catch on until the last possible moment. And then it registers in his brain. I'm just carefully eyeing my, my health. Uh, oh no! The plane fell down! That's one of the fun physics things that happens in this in this area. Is the, the plane can collapse from the ceiling. Well, there went my power fist. That's totally broken. Rest in peace, Fisto. I think we could just switch to A321's plasma rifle now. Make the rest of this a heck of a lot easier. Because I'm going to be doing a heck of a lot more damage. Oh, he picked up the Chinese assault rifle too. As you would. Okay, can we shoot the... Nope. Okay. Yep, it just collapsed. I don't know what that is. I think that's a fuel tank. Just kind of floating there. <laughs> Let's see if we can find the last uh, information terminal. Um... <laughs> oh, information... I came in through the bottom there, right? So if I go up and this way, I'm going to bet the other information terminals in the first area. <gasps> oh! The custodian key for the tech museum. Hey, hey. That's what I needed. Museum maintenance. Oh, these are the maintenance bulletins that we've already seen. Okay. I'm going to go up here really quick, but I am going to go back and look in the big rocket room. Yes, yes. Oh, it's this door. <laughs> funny how that works out. Real funny. Okay. So the planetarium is this way, right? This is, yep, this is the last bit that we got to do. Um, What is up here? Besides another dead person who was... Eating a can of beans, probably. Up here? Oh! I still can't access the turret control system. I'd really like to, though. That would be nice. This requires a key. And I can't access that. Where would the key be? Like, that's not required at all, I don't think. That's the Museum of Tech Security terminal. Don't think it's required at all for our goals here, but the planetarium has a little spawning situation that happens. Do I have mines? I do. So I'll just drop a couple of mines here. Maybe back here. Just to give me a head start, right? That's all I want. A little head start. Um, this is... Okay, this is the, the projector room. Ah! They're already coming in. Already coming in. Ah! We're having an old-fashioned shootout. Here we go. I wish I could corner peek. Like Fallout 4. I'm sure that's a mod. I wouldn't install it, but I'm sure that's a mod. <laughs> Aha! Take that, Muty! Wait. Why am I so low on... Oh my goodness. I don't have that many microfusion cells. Did I go through them that quickly? I don't believe it. That's ridiculous. I only have like 20 something left. That's ridiculous. Oh, I can access this terminal. ING. ING. Had to try the second one. Oh crap. Oh crap. I think we leveled. Oh, so close. So close. Unlock the planetary exit. Could not locate the door to unlock. Wait, why? What? 
Okay. Uh, research leads terminal. Log entry. The virus that has been plaguing our archetype model FF06 mainframe due to an unknown attack has finally been localized by our research team and identified. After a complete cleanup of the mainframe's core, I am happy to announce that the infection has been removed. The soul of this machine has improved. B. Bell research lead. Okay. It's already getting weird. Our new addition to the space flight gallery, the Virgo 2 Lunar Lander, is now open to the general public and ready for viewing. I want to extend a hearty thank you and job well done for the entire to the entire research and restoration team for pulling that pile of junk out of mothballs and putting it in such fine shape. Many sleepless nights were spent on this project, and as a small token of our thanks, you will find a substantial bonus in your next paycheck. Give each other a pat on the back. You've earned it. Bell research lead. Final entry. Can someone please fix the planetarium projection system? The automated system that was just installed is prone to malfunctions at least once a week. We've had to interrupt the programming more times than I care to remember and end up taking over manually. I suggest we remove the system and bring back the human elements so the audience will feel more engaged. Okay. Well, looks like they were also a victim of automation for sure. Alright. Well, we took out these super mutants. Is there another assault rifle there? Yeah. I wish that... <laughs> I could get some more ammunition earlier on. Maybe I'll maybe I'll talk to Moira, talk talk Moira into giving us a little a little energy cell microfusion stuff things. Okay, this is the other way around. So there's there's two paths basically to to the lunar lander and we just went in a big circle. Okay. That's good for me. It's really too bad that uh, we couldn't use our science, our sciency wiles to activate these turrets here. But now we're at the spot to where we can jump, jump back down and maybe find the terminal. Ooh, there's another stealth boy back here too. Maybe find the terminal that is the final one that we need to activate. Uh, nope, that's the research leads terminal. We've already read that for sure. Um, and this is this right here. This right here is the first one that we came to, right, to learn about it. So where is 001? Oh. <laughs> uh, I just messed up. Um, the first terminal that you get the message from is the first of the three. So we need to do this one now. I will save just in case. Activate it. There we go. Prime number. That would be... Mmm... I want to say 19. 19? There we go. Get the passcode. Nice job, Jigs. I knew you'd remember the good old days. The loot is in the security office safe in the upper part of the West Wing. Use the terminal up there to get in. Enjoy your share, pal. You earned it. Meet me in the old diner outside Jury Street Metro Station. See you there. Good luck, Prime. Okay. And a marker was added for Jury Street Metro Station. Um, but there's also a goodie in security that maybe we'll have access to. Maybe. Is that the security room or is it is it in the West the West Wing? It's at the West Wing. So we have to go back through. Oh my goodness. I will montage this. Got turned around a little bit, but finally found security. <laughs> so now I can access this terminal and unlock the safe. Should we go through the security bulletins? No. No. Let's just... Oh, the gun locker key and some bottle caps. Thank you very much, Prime. I appreciate it. So the gun locker key, the gun locker is inside of the planetarium. Planetorium? This room, Please. with the pretty planets and stuff in the in the ceiling. From the of our 
So this is where the gun cabinet is. Yes. Three more assault rifles, a missile, a missile launcher, and some pulse grenades. Thank you so very much. I need to repair some of these assault rifles that I picked up. Because now we're super duper encumbered. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with <laughs> how much stuff I have to sell. Because we're going to need it. Use some buff out to get out of here. And then we will return to a town first, probably. And then uh, take the dish to the Washington Monument to place up there. And then return to Three Dog and finally get the location of James, our father daddy. Father Liam. First, I'll go to Fort Independence. I found stuff. Let's see what you've got. Laser pistol. We can always use another one of these. How'd you like your payment? Stims, please. There. Everyone's favorite. Yeah, see you. Okay, can I walk yet? No. <laughs> How are we at? Okay. We have two pounds that we need to shed. There we go. Easy enough. Now, let's go to... Uh, we're going to be going to Rivet City anyway. So, I'm going to go back to... Oh, I didn't do Moira's quest yet. So, I guess we will go... We'll go to the Washington Monument. I guess. I, we're doing some weird stuff right now. We're going to the Washington Monument. Put the, put the thing on the thing. Take the long trip upwards. Open the door. Go back to Three Dog. And do the thing. Ah! There we go. <laughs> Bad radio. No more sounds that you make. Not allowed. And then we have the lengthy ride up the Washington Monument. Find the Washington Monument. I completed that. We actually get to see, like, the rest of the wasteland as we, as we ascend. Is that how it goes? No, it's just bright light. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> oh, now we're up here. Okay. Now we can see the rest of the wasteland. Ooh, it looks kind of jank if you look too close. We're looking close. Ugh. Ugh. Oh. Is that Z fighting? Is that what that is? I'm pretty sure that's what that's called. I have no solution for that. So here's the relay. Install the dish. Boom. There it is. And I've gained karma. I've gained positive karma. So that put us back at neutral. Heck yeah, it did. Oh, everything's coming up Kato. And we can fast travel right back to the GNR Plaza. Speak to Three Dog. And never have to talk to him again. Not bad, <laughs> kid. Not bad at all. Yeah, you darn right. A threeest of dogs, I have done your mission. Please tell me where Liam is. I mean James. Looks like the good fight has gained a new out. Hey, all right, the hero of the wasteland returns. And now he speaks with a filter because he's got, he's got the power helmet on. All right, uh, thrilled freaking lifetime. Smoke a peace pipe, man. You know you are so unlike your father. I suppose that's what you want to know next. Yes. Spill it, Three Dog. Whoa, now. Take it easy. You ask, so I will provide. When your dad passed through here, he and I talked for a good long time. He's a real stand-up kind of guy. He mentioned some scientific mumbo-jumbo which didn't make sense to me. I mentioned something called Project Purity. He also said something about going to visit a Dr. Lee in Rivet City. So he left in a hurry. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Kato Plays Special Roulette in Fallout 3. You can catch new episodes Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific. Thanks so much to my patrons on screen, including Wasteland Legends Sven and Rose. Hope to see you in the next one. But for now, I'm Kato Genesis, and may you wander the wasteland like you own it.